Thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. For all of the witnesses, I have one quick question. We've heard testimony on the access to information from a number of witnesses who, with that exception, all agree that the access to information is deemed to be a basic human right. In a quick yes or no, would you agree with that statement? It, it's not something I, I've called human, a human right. Uh, so your answer is no. You don't view it as a basic human right? The Access to Information Act is a quasi-constitutional statute. It is an extremely important statute that, that we have So is your respect. answer no as well? As a human right, as we have defined human rights, uh, no. Okay. But certainly, is it, is it uh, no. receiving protection under the Charter of Rights? Yes. No, no, but your answer is no. At last witness, Ms. Remsu, no. You don't see it as a basic human right access to information. With respect to uh, some of the recommendations in Mr. Marlowe's report, uh, again, we've heard expert testimony from various bodies, uh, various jurisdictions that do believe that by giving the commissioner order making powers would help alleviate the backlog. In other words, the ability to uh, bring, f make sure that the information is released without going to federal court. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, the only comment I would make on that is that I don't think you necessarily require an order making power in order to, to affect change. And I think as the minister has indicated in his testimony, the Department of Justice was able to manage its outstanding backlog, et cetera. Uh, within the organization itself. So I think other departments certainly have, have it within their own capacity to respond to, to the concerns of the uh, Access to Information Commissioner. With respect to who should be held accountable when a department fails, in other words, you're getting upwards of 200, 250 days is the norm to get information and that's uh, you know based on the statistics provided by the commissioner who should be held accountable and and how do we get that rectified when you're dealing with the culture of secrecy that again everybody uh, agrees that there is a culture of secrecy and has been for many years In the Department of Justice, what, uh, what our deputy minister did under the direction of the minister was to put in place means and processes whereby we would be able to respond in the timeframes that are required. I mean, ultimately, it's the minister, uh, but certainly a deputy minister and, and assistant deputy ministers have responsibility to ensure that we respect whatever the requirements of the legislation are. And if they do, what sanction? If they if they fail to do that, what sanctions would you recommend that a minister should receive? Should there be financial penalties? Should there be uh, some sort of compensation to the requester? I don't think I'd be prepared to say what type of uh, sanction a minister should receive. I mean, certainly there are reports to Parliament. It's it's publicly indicated, and Minister um, the Access to Commissioner uh, Marlowe has has issued his own reports. They're tabled in Parliament. They're subject to public scrutiny. Uh, to me, that's that's public accountability at its highest. 